one uh, here from Trisha Stone, who is setting up um, basically a very interesting uh, marketing operation at Stone Marketing Strategy and is helping their clients to, you know, excel online. So we're very curious to hear what Trisha has to, you know, tell from her experience. So Trisha, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lucas. I'm happy to be here. Very good. So tell us all about the company. What is it all about? So Stone Marketing Strategy is uh, about helping business owners enhance their presence online. We focus on everything from what their reviews look like on Google, what pulls up when somebody starts to research them, their website, their social media presence, really all of it and help them put a strategy in place and then implement if needed. Very good. And what type of business are we talking about? Is that like local businesses uh, or in which area are we in here? So we've worked with a, a number of different businesses and industries, but really we focus on service-based businesses. So we still work in a variety of industries, but we really focus on those businesses offering a service, potentially a product that they sell on the side, perhaps online, but really those individuals that interact with the public. Gotcha. Very interesting. Any particular verticals within that, or is that all across the board? It is all across the board. You know, we have clients anywhere at, in financial services. We have clients in real estate. We have clients in the medical profession. Um, so we, we do kind of span a, a, a segment of industries, really. Very interesting. And how would, you know, let's say a business owner of a financial business or medical related business, how would they, you know, discover um, your company? What's a typical journey they would go through? Um, so a lot of our clients find us on social media. Some of our clients are referred to us by current clients that we have. And once they discover us or find us, say, on LinkedIn or perhaps um, Instagram or Facebook, they would go into our page, check out our website, and then they can register for a free initial consultation where they can find out if this is a relationship that would work, if we will be able to help them with what, they, what concern or problem that they are looking to solve. Got you. You mentioned that you're supporting this company sort of, you know, on their different elements of their online strategy. Could you describe me where do you start and, and where do you stop? Is that sort of, you know, from traffic generation down to website building or how should I imagine that? Sure. So we really do the whole gamut. I do have partners within my organization, so we, we can focus initially on the website structure. What we want to do is, is center it around the customer experience. So for any company that we're working with, what is that client experiencing from when they first find your website, when they first make an appointment, all the way through to the end? And then, of course, how do we nurture them after the fact to keep them coming back and keep that repeat business going? Very interesting. Um, so you mentioned the after the sign up situation. Can you tell me about, you know, how you're helping the businesses to qualify the leads um, and evaluate the, the quality of the traffic that is coming through? Sure. So what we've been doing um, is, I guess it depends on, on the type of business, um, but we have put something in place where we implement sort of an application process on the website where the company can direct the potential client to a form, what they fill out, and they can determine at that point if the business, if the client is right for the services that are provided. Additionally, we do um, set up more of a scheduler. If the business owner doesn't necessarily want clients filling out a form, they would rather have the conversation in person. We do help them schedule those conversations on their website. Very good. Is there anything that you learned because you mentioned the forms? You know, there's this ever, evergreen discussion of how many form fields versus conversion rate. What's your take on that? You know, I, quite honestly, the, what I've seen, at least in my experience, is the simpler, the better. It doesn't necessarily need, I, I typically try to keep it around five to seven form fields that they fill out. If you're asking for too much information at the beginning, it can be off-putting to anybody that's trying to make an appointment or find out if they qualify um, during that process. Very interesting. Okay, cool. And, and can you tell me how you're thinking about sort of increasing the amount of leads your clients are winning from the website? So we tend to focus on integrated strategies. So really uh, everything from bringing the clients in, we focus a lot on social media. Um, various customers are right for different platforms. So we don't subscribe to the um, belief that you have to be on every single platform. Really, you can focus on a certain number, two, perhaps three, and start to funnel in those leads that way, right? So reaching out to your ideal customer, trying to garner their interest, get them interested in the services that you provide, and then go into your website that way. 
Interesting. Anything that you've learned or that you were surprised by what it takes and actually to increase conversions on the page? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it is interesting. What I have found is that certain social media platforms are harder to get um, clicks on, clicks to the website on than others. And so you do really have to look at it from sort of a holistic perspective, right? So where does the customer start their journey? Are they starting at a month before they need the services? Or are they starting at six months before? And then sort of design your strategy that way. So if they're starting six months before, what is the best platform for you to be on to gain their attention? And what type of content do you need to put out there to garner those clicks, to get people interested, to, you know, pique their interest, to, to really break through the clutter because there's a lot out there. And so it's, uh, it is interesting that certain platforms aren't always the best at getting those initial clicks, that initial interest. Very interesting. I would like to switch gears a little bit and learn about you as a, as a leader in the business a little bit. So how do you educate yourself? Like what type of content do you consume and how, um, you know, how you would be sort of, you know, bettering yourself in terms of knowledge? Sure. So I educate myself through a variety of areas. I am an avid reader of social media examiner. I'm also very involved in the digital marketing, uh, digital marketer institute, and I'm working on several certifications just to have that additional knowledge behind me. Um, I am also part of a mastermind group where I am able to connect with other digital marketers really across the world and share ideas and best practices, find out what's working in different industries and for different campaigns. So those, those um, methods have been really helpful. Additionally, I am a avid podcast consumer myself, and um, there are several that I, um, I listen to daily. Very good. You mentioned the mastermind group there. Maybe for everybody who is listening, can you tell us like how you discovered your group? And I mean, you don't have to reveal the name, obviously, but like, mm -hmm. you know, any, any tips for anybody searching for something like that? Sure. So, you know, there's, there's kind of those... Um, thought leaders, gurus kind of everywhere. And uh, the, the individual that I found, I found earlier on when I wanted to really increase my knowledge of social media and how it worked with marketing um, and, and integrated with marketing. And so I've actually, I actually found her several years ago and I've been following her, um, her progress and her business throughout the last few years. And about six months ago, she approached me and asked me if I would be interested in joining this mastermind, told me what it was about and what I could expect. Um, and it was just the right time for my business. And what I really liked about it was that that um, that one on one attention, it's a smaller mastermind, there's only about 50 of us, and it tends to be a lot more intimate, you're able to actually form relationships with other people um, in the industry who are perhaps going through the same journey or um, complementary journeys where you can learn from one another and also contribute and provide value. Very cool. What's a topic that you would have recently researched and really focused on? Um, recently, I researched um, retar uh, different strategies for retargeting on Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. So I have a number of clients that are running Facebook ads. And so we've been utilizing retargeting campaigns, but it's always good to figure out how to better uh, increase those conversion rates um, when you're reaching out to individuals who have indicated their interest by visiting your website. Okay, very good. Makes a lot of sense. So we basically, since we're approaching the end of the interview already, so I would love to jump into the rapid fire questions. Are you ready for those? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so far, everybody survived. So the survival rate is really high. Okay, good. <laughs> Very good. So, okay, um, for your company, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word marketing operations? Um, process and procedures. Mm-hmm. What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word sales operations? Um, <laughs> more, less, less process around that one. Okay. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be one thing that you want to have fixed for your clients today? Uh, conversion rates. Mm -hmm. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about your company? How to better help my customers during uh, the global pandemic. Yeah. Ties into the conversion rates you just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that conversion rates on the ads or on the website? 
on the website. Gotcha. So now, last very very last question on the rapid fire question. Um, if today would be the first day you stepping out the door, this is the first day you're running the company. What's one advice that you would give yourself? First day I'm running the company. Well, piece of advice um, I would give myself is to have conversations with everyone, not just the people you think are in your target area, but that um, by talking to a number of different people, you'll be able to better understand your target um, and also understand that just because somebody is not in your target market doesn't mean they don't know people that are and they could refer you. Very good, Tricia. I really appreciate that you took the time today to speak with us at Papung Presents about uh, what you guys are doing over there and which magic you're doing over there with uh, digital marketing and helping generate leads for, for your clients. And we're really going to, you know, guys who are listening in, keep that advice from Tricia on hand. Once you're starting out, maybe not narrow down too early, but keep the conversations open with everyone that you never know where it might lead you. So, Tricia, thanks for being part of Papung Presents today. Thank you, Lucas. I enjoyed it.